Hello, welcome to Educators on Education, a study.com webinar series. We are delighted to have you. Before we get, dig into intros, please tell us a little bit about yourself by completing the poll on your screen. Also, we have a large group of attendees. If you have, um, so we'll have attendees muted. That said, any questions you have, please navigate to the Q&A tab and our team will be monitoring inquiries there. We'll also do a formal Q&A at the end. For those of you who joined previous webinars, welcome back. If this is your first time here, welcome. We're gonna give just a few more moments for people to join. So go ahead and complete that survey at, on your screen while we wait. All right, once again, welcome to Educators in Education. Um, this is our webinar series and we're delighted to have you. Today, we have our guest, Erin uh, Gasparup. Um, I am Charlotte Payton, a partnership manager with study.com and I have been in education for the last 18 years. I'm a former high school teacher with a master's in literacy and I'm currently working on my doctorate in education. Been supporting schools, teachers and students in ed tech since 2016. Today, I would like to welcome Aaron Casper, who is an English language arts teacher at Chartiers Houston Junior Senior High School. Together with her team of teachers and in partnership with her administration, Chartiers Houston has created a program to get students back on track, reviewing, rewinding, and replenishing their knowledge and mastery of content. Thank you, Aaron, for joining us today and sharing how you have implemented the program, who it's been impacted, and the role that study has played in that program. Thank you for Thank joining Thank you for having me. Welcome. When we spoke uh, in pre preparation of our um, meeting today, you shared a little bit about what brought you to teaching. So could you share that story with us again? Sure. Um, I've always been a lover of school and learning, and I always wanted to be a teacher. I, I was the girl who played school after school and all weekend long and just absolutely just loved it. But I... Um, I came to school with, oh, I, 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 are you there? I lost yeah, we you. Just lost you first. I was like, where did I go? Um, <laughs> but I lost this, the, the ability to, in, in, in school, I was, I, I learned, I found out that I had a learning disability in the fifth grade and I was really, really troubled with it wasn't easy for me anymore. And I felt really lost. And I felt that I was someone who was learning all by herself. And I would come home and in fifth grade was spending hours and hours and hours a night doing my homework. And I kept thinking, you know, school has always been that this is the way we've always done it. And teachers seemed very status quo and not really changing things up. And, and I was struggling as a learner. And I kept thinking there has to be a better way to do this. And I was passionate about finding a better way and finding solutions to my problem because I knew I wasn't the only one. So um, when I went into college, they said, you know, hey, we have too many teachers, so not going to work for you unless you want to move far away to the Midwest, which I'm family oriented and that didn't really appeal to me. So I was like, all right, I'll just change my, my dream and do something else. And I majored into communications and things like that and had a lot of interesting jobs, but I still couldn't get the bug that I wanted to be the teacher. You know, I wanted to go and maybe I watched one too many movies <laughs> that I could make a difference in the world. So that's what I went and I went to do. And I went back into school to become a teacher later on in life. So this is my 15th year in my second career to kind of try to make a difference. And being an English teacher, I always say I'm, I'm the subject no one likes. You want to freak out a kid, you give them a blank piece of paper and they panic. So I wanted to kind of change my approach and, and how kids, students look at English class and reading and literature and like learning about themselves and the world they're about to face with the best tools I have to create empathy and create good, solid citizens when they leave the classroom. I love that. Um, so what you kind of touched on it already, but if you were to pick one thing that's your favorite thing about teaching students, what is that? My favorite thing is, well, I mean, I love the grade that I teach because they are a little just odd, but you know, so am I. So we work out well together, but I love the fact that, you know, if they don't 
can't get it or maybe they don't want to get it or they're resistant to getting it. I am all about finding a way to make them. And if it has, I, I take an inventory of like what they like and don't like and, and their music favorite things. And, and I will go to great lengths to be attention getting or to connect it for them. So in a way that they've never thought. And, and sometimes, you know, my harshest criticisms are Mrs. Gasper, I can't even listen to music anymore. Cause all I'm like, Oh, that's a simile. Oh, that's a this. Oh, that's a that. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm sorry I ruined it for you, <laughs> but I was like, well, that's a good thing. So finding different ways to appeal to kids, to get them interested in, in something that they, you know, they all, I hate writing and I hate, and I'm like, that's, that's everything that's about you is your ownership, your words. So I want you to embrace that and love it. So I'll do what I got to do. I love that. So you, you're the one at your school who found study.com. So tell us a little bit about what drew you to study.com, why you decided to introduce this for your whole school to use as a school-wide approach. Well, originally, you know, I was looking for myself in Pennsylvania. I am a, I am a Keystone test, state test subject area in the 10th grade. And I'm always looking for new materials because, you know, same problems every year, what kids aren't doing, what they're not getting. And with the COVID 2020, you know, leaving school and then the, the hybrid and the remote learning, which was very difficult for me as a teacher, um, I really struggled because I was like, I need to find different ways to see how, like how to get the content area or what I'm, what, how to introduce this or fix this, but I don't have a lot of time. And I being a, you know, self-professed little nerd was looking at a Friday night, probably I'm sure. And uh, was watching TV and <laughs> I was Googling Keystone literature exam and help for Keystone literature exam. And um, it came your study.com came up and I made, made a little account and I was playing around and I was like, oh my gosh, this is great. And then I started to like put some things in my classroom, just kind of see how it goes. And I am one to want to share. I want everyone to succeed. And, and if I've found something that can be helpful, I'm definitely going to give it to someone else and let them. And, and so I went through all the like different programs and I made a list and I went to the and a couple of the other Keystone teachers first. And I was like, hey, did you guys know about this? And they were like, no. And they looked it over and were like, Hey, thanks for sharing. It looks good. And I was like, well, why am I keeping this a secret? Like, you know, with just us, like I saw there's AP programs and just the learning loss that has occurred could be a huge, this could be a huge benefit to our students. So I went to admin with a, Hey, look what I found. And this is all the stuff you get from this particular program. What do you guys think? And you know, there's, there's certain things that get people's attention and, and learning loss and test scores and, you know, programs that help with all of those types of things. And they, you know, we met and they, they agreed to, to support my, my finding. That's awesome. And so you didn't just introduce study.com in every classroom in the building. You guys actually built a program to help students with learning loss. So tell us a little bit about that. Yes. So pri prior to um, the 2019-2020 school year, you know, as every teacher and every administrator faces, you know, there's always going to be learning loss. But, you know, COVID definitely made that a lot more of an impact on our students. And we're always facing the same things. What can we do? And, and you know, you're using the same materials, like with this, what the state gives you. And I'm not sure how everyone else's state, but, you know, we get the questions, but we don't always get what the kid answered. And, and sometimes that's really hard for me as if you're trying to help them, but you don't know what they've done wrong. Like that's, that seems to be the best kept secret in education. Well, I can't tell you what they did on the test. I can only tell you a score. So what I decided was um, that there had to be a better way. And, and I don't like to really waste time. Like, I feel, you know, even if, if you're making a meaningful, meaningful class contribution to a class discussion, as long as it's good and, and thorough and you're getting in there, that's not a waste of time. But waste of time to me were like, we got out of school at 237. I don't know why that was a big, big issue for me. And I was like, why not 240? Like, why 237? I feel weird telling people that. And so when I refractured the day and figured out how many more hours of instructional time we could have if we expanded our day by five to three minutes and did a little bit of different and took a cl classes down a little bit, we came up with a thing that we call quality resource time. 
And I had heard about it for remediation purposes only um, from another teacher in a, in a more affluent school district because I was trying to find that where is that time you meet with the kids that already took the test, already did the material, but they're falling short. And she told me that, oh, they do this in their school. And I was like, well, this doesn't have to be just, oh my goodness, like for remediation, this can be, you know, I missed class last week and, and I need to see the teacher because everything is building on it, right? And you miss those things. And, and then all of a sudden you're turned off to learning because you're not making good grades. You're not earning good grades because no fault of your own. You just aren't getting something that is a part of the puzzle. And that was real important to me was these puzzle pieces, you know, what you're missing. And so quality resource time pulls kids who are in need of remediation for the state testing. It pulls kids who are below a C in class and they get the help that they need. It pulls kids who've been absent and miss work. And and the goal was to not interrupt constant class time. Any teacher knows that no matter how long your class is, it's never really long enough as far as <laughs> as far as teaching goes. Sometimes they're too long because you're like, oh my gosh, this crew. But um as far as teaching goes, you know, we have 40 minutes and that's covering vocabulary, reading, writing. I, I don't want kids to go have to make up a test or come late from somewhere else. So this kind of pulled all that together. Um, we also had some issues with attendance. And so when we, we set this up, we set it up on a four-year rotation. We are a junior, senior high school. So when our kids, they have it in the, in the junior high. And then when they come from seventh grade and eighth grade, they go to ninth grade, whoever that teacher is that gets them for that roster class will have that group of students for four years. And that was an, an, another piece that kind of fit in to kind of reach to those kids and start to see trends like, hey, notice that you always miss Thursdays. Why are you always missing Thursdays? Oh, did you know so-and-so and go to someone like, did you know they're working? Did you know this? They're having problems. And it kind of opened the door for more dialogue and to kind of pinpoint some problems. So we're addressing chronic absenteeism in this 29 minute class. Um, We are also utilizing student tutors, peer tutors. And that has been amazing to see the climate change between groups of students, you know, your high flyer AP students versus your kids that are, are barely making it. And when they work together, you know, yeah, we, it takes some, some kids are naturals at it, just like teachers. Some people are just natural at it. And some people are like, okay, this is what I need you to do. And they go and they are learning, they're learning leadership and critical thinking, but they're building bonds with kids that they normally might not associate with in the day. And and to see a kid stop another kid in the hall that they might not be in the same friend group and ask them, Hey, how was that test? How was your chem test? Did you do okay? And like, get excited for them, for their achievement, you know, like, that adds something that a lot of kids are missing, you know, and and I think we talked yesterday, there's certain kids that aren't getting that school priority at home and it's never been there. But now that they see that it's, it's not this daunting place to be and that their peers and friends are on their side and helping them out. And, you know, you get, and kids get to see kids in a different light and they're like, this Casper, they're really smart. And I'm like, yeah, they're just a little lazy. That's the best piece, right? That they're understanding that these kids that are smart, they're just missing something. And you're able to fill that, backfill that with the study.com or the peer editor, peer tutoring. Right. And the tutors get access to those things and they get to watch the videos with them and then they can explain it in a different way than the video. So now we've heard it from me. They've heard it from the video. And now the, the, the kids are interacting, the students and having three different ex- types of explanation. It's like, oh, OK, I, I get it now. And sometimes it's that kid on kid that really makes the huge difference because they it's the way they explain it it's much more simplistic. Like I could talk about something, but it's what I love. And I've been doing it for so long that I'm like so fast. And they're like, I didn't understand. But when a kid explains it and they do it in a different, they're like, oh, so it's really opening up and and taking down communication barriers and things like that. And again, just by tweaking the schedule, taking a few minutes here and there that could have been better used. We created it every single day for 29 minutes And then when we have a full week, we have fun Friday. And on that time, during that 29 minute, kids get to sign up for activities and teachers host them. So we have somebody who hosts like an art project and somebody who hosts categories and somebody who hosts trivia or bingo. And it's just another way to kind of interact with your students and just like 
let your guard down, your teacher guard, and just have fun. And they get to see you in, in a different light with a different hat. Like, you know, oh my gosh, they're funny. <laughs> oh my gosh, they're not so serious all the time. And again, it brings in all those different groups. How do you get the kids that are peer, you know, peer tutoring? How do you get them to sign up for that? You know, are they looking at like that's extra work or how are you motivating those kids? Actually, it, you know, it, the system sometimes is as much as some things are, are, are broke in our system of education. You know, we have we have a requirement of like to get into certain things. You know, these kids that are up here are um, wanting to fill out college applications and scholarship applications. And one of the biggest things is, you know, community service. And we say tutoring your peers is your biggest form of community service. So we give community service hours for it. So that enables them to, you know, and, and, and it's funny, it'll start with a small group of kids that are like, yeah, I like to tutor. And then it kind of grows like, well, I understood the story or, or when you invite a kid, you're like, you're really pretty good at this particular, would you like to come and help some kids that I know that would really relate to you? They, they're taken aback because no one's ever asked them to be the leader before to step up. And so it, opens again a lot of different doors so whether it's volunteer or whether you ask them and, and they take it very you know very pride they're full of pride about it because it gives them opportunities as well so it's not so much extra work because I'm giving them what they need through the study.com through the provided lessons through all of that and it's just that extra time that you know, all of us wish we had more one-on-one -on -one time with students. This allows us to have one-on-one -on -one students. So, you know, I assign my peer tutors to one or two kids, and then I am also free to go around the class and get things that kids need and papers that they need. And I can maximize those 29 minutes because I have kids helping me. And it makes them see what a teacher goes through and what a teacher, and they're like, man, what can I, what more can I do to help? Like they see that you have a lot on your plate or how many kids need your attention or need your help. And they're like, I got it, Miss Gav. And when they start going off on their own, it's, you're like, oh, the little birds are leaving the nest. Like they don't even need me anymore. So it's a great, it's a great thing to, to experience just watching the growth, their personal growth. And I feel it sharing sharing their information, their test scores and what they do well. And we've always kept it to us and we keep it and we make them do, if you don't explain why you're doing it, it's kind of like when you give them, I always give the example to my kids of like, you know, we don't always do a great job of explaining as adults. Um, when I was little and I would turn the light on in the car, my mom would totally freak out and be like, turn the light off, turn the light off. I'm going to get arrested. And I was like, oh my gosh like, and now that I'm a mom and I say have said the same thing to my kids I'm like the real reason is it does make it difficult to drive <laughs> when you have a light in your rearview mirror you think you're getting run off the road the kids were all like that makes sense and I was like if we equip them with those same keys like you're not dumb you're not stupid you're just missing this tiny piece here and if we can fix that then we can get you over here and when they see that it's not all of third grade that they screwed up in, or it's just one little part, their attitude changes. And it's not overnight and there's tough, tough nuts to crack for sure, but it's so worth it to see a kid start to just, or hear them say, I've never had a grade so high, or I've never done so well on a test. And, and then they'll say, well, how does it feel? And they're like, it feels so much better than struggling. That, and I, that's the most powerful thing, right? That they're, you're making them feel more confident as students. I want to clarify two things. One thing you said is you share assessments and results. Mm -hmm. You're talking about with the individual students, right? You're not yeah. sharing that. I just wanted to make sure that people understood. That oh, no. What, what I share with, with the student. <laughs> we always have like work days. Like, so I'll give them X amount of time to work on a, on a project that like a culminating project that they're working on, like a one pager or something like that. I, as a literature teacher, don't give chapter tests or novel tests I feel like there's a bigger picture to be had than a multiple choice about what color dress and I don't care if you remember that detail I want you to get the world part the part that you know what's going to help you why are we connecting it why are we reading this novel that was in the 1930s and in 2023 I want those type of you know types of projects and thinking and, and and things like that. So when they're working and doing some things in class, I take the time those days, or I use that QRT to meet with my students. And we do parent or student teacher 
and we go over all, okay, like this is the last test you took. And sometimes they're shocked that I actually look at their tests or they're like their results, like, you know, their diagnostic testing or their foresight testing. They're like, oh, you, you looked at that. And I said, yeah, you didn't, what happened? And they're like, I didn't think anybody was using it. So I didn't really try. And I'm like, oh, well, I am. And now I feel like we have to put all these things in place. And they're like, well, I'll do it again. <laughs> I'll try hard. And it kind of changes their attitude towards the information we need, but doesn't give them any, if it's not for a grade. Right. They don't care. They yeah. don't care. And so, and then this culture of, you know, testing and practice testing and diagnostic testing, and, you know, they're, they're over tested, they're tested. And so they're like, I'll just make a pattern. You right. know, I'll if, just they, answer. if they wait too long for those results, they stop being meaningful. Right. And that's the other thing is like, you know, as a teacher, you're that get to the results and then find the time to meet with the kids. And, and that's why I like, you know, using that class time, if they're all working on a project and you can meet with two or three kids and then say like, walk around and check the thing, you know, you're making the most of your four, but you're also giving them the individual attention. And when I told them that I was going to do individual assignments for them, I told them, like, I explained it to them, like, it's the, it's the, it's a selfish thing you're allowed to do. You and I are partners, like we're a team together, but we're partners. So look at your study, your study.com assignments as you get to go on a shopping spree at the, at your favorite store. And you don't have to think about your mom. You don't have to think about what does your sister need or what did grandma tell me to pick up? It's all about you. So I know that this person over here, so don't think that every, nobody's, do, you're doing extra work. All you're doing is what you need. You're doing your puzzle pieces and they're doing their puzzle pieces. And sometimes they're the same and sometimes they're not, but it's all about you. It's individual. We just had a question pop up and it was, okay. um, how has study been helpful in setting up uh, in the setup of your peer tutoring? So is it an important piece? Like, how are you using it for that? I think it is really important because a lot of things that will keep a kid away from this type of one-on-one -on -one interaction is, well, I don't know what to say to them. I don't know what to, I, I'm not sure I know how to explain it. When you have the materials right there and they watch the video with them and then you can do the quiz and things like that, they don't, they don't need to go home and practice. It's all right there. So it has made the, the tutors much more comfortable to like, you know, be with each other and like watch it together. And the greatest thing is it's only reinforcing things that the other kids that are there to tutor already know. And then they might have their own epiphany, like, oh, that also means this or that. Right. So it's like a waste of their time, but by giving them the materials from the study.com and setting it up, you know, plus they like to say like, how do you do on the quiz? <laughs> like, did you get them all right? Like, you know, and things like that. And they're like, okay, let's go back or let's, or I don't know why that is. And then they call me over and then they both are like, and so again, it's building another little team and, but it's making them feel that they have everything they need. I'm not just saying like, well, here's what they did wrong. Fix them. Right. So it's not, I think it's not as a daunting as experience, you know what I mean? Or that, or a power thing, like, well, I do really good in school. You better listen to me type thing. So um, that's, that's a big thing. And, and, you know, like I said, when you go to, when you go to school and they're trying to get you, they tell you all about, I remember my interview was all about how do you differentiate? And that was a big thing for me as a learning support student who was a high flyer, it was, it was amazing to me that people didn't want to like help me because they were like, she's fine. And so that's, that's my passion is to find all the different ways. Like, you know, and I try to incorporate it. If we're reading, we listen to it. I read it. They have it in front of them. We do it, you know, so all kinds of the different things. So every kid is kind of getting it, whether they realize it or not. So is that, and one of the questions and it is coming to me as you're speaking too, that differentiation sounds like a lot of work on your part, especially the QRT time where you're like, okay, this kid is missing a little piece from third grade. I'm going to assign that to him. This, you know, well, this kid needs, so tell this, us like how, does this make it easier that you have study? <laughs> it does. And let me tell you, for those of you who are listening and, you know, you're like, oh my gosh, the extra time, I was really concerned about that. And, and I feel like every year, you know, I try to be a better version of the person I was before. So I like kind of sit down June. I take all of June off just to, you know, recoup, but in July I start thinking, okay, what's some things I could do different What's some things. So I think you only get stronger, the more you put in and, and things like that. So I've already built in things after 15 years. I know things I like to do and what works and what I'm going to sub out. 
But the staff at study.com is the most amazing. When I got this information, so, and you kind of feel responsible. Like I put my whole school out here and I went, you know, so like, I want to be a good little nerdy <laughs> like person. Like I want to do a good job and, and things like that. So I have to use it and be a good person that when they ask me questions, like, oh yeah, I did. What was amazing to me is I got these CDT results and they were telling me where my kids were falling short. And I was like, okay, great. Now what, where do I find that? And I reached out to the team at study.com and I was like, okay, so I have students that this is where they're saying sixth grade, fifth grade, what, and within less than 48 hours, I want to say 24 hours, they gave me all the resources I need for those particular anchors, those particular standards, all of that type of stuff. And I mean, I came in the next day, like I said, and I was like skipping, like, I was like, guess what they did. And so my English group, my department was like, okay, I'm going to email them today. And they have, I mean, it's an Excel spreadsheet. It says everything on it. And Chris was amazing. And she, and I was like, I'm so sorry to bother you. She's like, no, I love to do this. I'm like, well, we're going to be best buddy. <laughs> because so I wasn't alone. I know that, that we've all signed up for programs or paid for things, even in our own, like trying to be better. We bought books. Most of the time I feel alone again. I feel alone. I wasn't, I felt like I was much, so much part of the team. And like that, you know, they were like, like, hey, listen, we know our program that we're going to get you what you need to make these kids successful. And then I was able to just make it there are things that I look forward to doing better every single time and, and integrating it more and more. And I've been going back and putting like the videos in and things like that. But, you know, I've never been, I'm not always one to like, I like to ask for help because I want people to always think I'm capable and, you know, and I think that's a, that's a working mom thing. You know, sometimes we want to show that we can do it all. But when I reached out the, not only was it, fast and professional and helpful. It was just a breath of fresh air to be, I feel like I'm on my side instead of like, we well, can look here and not be inundated. So I have to, I have to sing the praises of the staff has been so helpful in, in everything. Like no matter what I've asked, they've, they've found things for me. And, you know, I'm like, I have another teacher who was struggling with this in math. I know nothing about math. So they were like, we're on it. And that was just, just a breath of fresh air to just be a part of a team that actually was, was all focused on the same goal. Well, we're very proud of our client success team um, and they do work really hard and they were educators. So I think they know what it feels like to sit in your spot and be a little isolated alone. So I'm, I'm really happy to hear that that all went and that, you know, the follow-up question was, do you have the content you need? But I would say yes, because if you couldn't Absolutely, it, yeah. the client the success thing, team found it for you. Yeah. And the, and the greatest thing in the world is that the videos are short, you know, that's why, like when you're doing things and you're asking them to build things, it's not like 20 pages and I'm asking them to write 17 more different essays and to read 13 more books. And it, it's, it's compact content driven and it's just putting those little things in, and you can see it starting to build already in the things that they, you know, as they're building on they're they're already catching up. Uh, one last question. It's uh, 328. So one last question. Um, are, so you've talked a lot about the, your QRT program using study.com, but is, are you also using it in your classroom and are your other are departments yes. using it just for regular instruction? Yes, we do use it for, uh, uh, everyone has been using it for the, the remediation and the catch up thing like that, but also we've built it all into our classrooms by, you know, um, instead of us creating the PowerPoints or finding a video, it, it's there. It's, it's, it's there for us to use. And so like when we're talking about, you know, I, I mean, and you can find anything that you're searching for, whether it's by topic or whether it's by standard, however you want to approach it, it, it was there for you. So I've been, you know, incorporating more of the material and asking the questions like in class from the quizzes or taking the transcript and, and like making sure I'm hitting certain things when I'm teaching it, you know, and so it's been helping and prepare my lessons. It's been helpful in my class presentation, um, in my question and answering. So yes, we are, we are putting it in as much as we possibly can. That's awesome. So happy to hear that. 
Um, I'm just going to call out for one last, if anybody has questions, we have a minute left. But in the meantime, thank you so much, Erin, sharing your experience. You make me miss teaching, but it makes you really happy that your students have you and your school have, has you, because I know it's a lot of extra yeah. energy to coordinate this and your students are so lucky. Um, we have one last poll that's going to launch in a second. If you are interested in learning more about how study.com can support your school, um, you've seen that detailed customized um, implementation is, is part of what we do. And we're very proud of that. And we'd love to meet with you if you need that. Um, but otherwise, Erin, thank you so much for sharing. We are so appreciative and we continue, we want to continue to partner with you forever. <laughs> oh, I'll, I, I'm not going anywhere. So that's good. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much. Have a great Thank rest you. of your Thank you. You guys have a great day. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Bye.